Uh, hey there, YouTube. I uh, I just wanted to draw your attention to uh, an unusual property of K. Um, I was going to talk about this in the last video, but I forgot, and it's worth knowing. So we'll have a look at it now. Right. So um, let's uh, take this argument here. If necessarily P, then P. You'd think, uh, well, that's obviously true. If something if something is necessarily true. Uh, then it must be true, right? If necessarily p, then p. A simple, obviously true argument. Well, let's test it for validity. Uh, so we got our world. We assume the um, the negation of of our conclusion, which is uh, with no premises. So um, we've got a false conditional, and that means that we have a true antecedent and a false consequent. So we've got necessarily p and not p and look at that that's all we can do our argument uh, can uh, our tree can go no further um, it's complete but it's still open and that would imply that our original argument this is invalid this is very strange we have necessarily p and not p um, our tree is still open and this is invalid. That's quite odd, isn't it? Well, let's take another argument. Let's say, if necessarily P, then possibly P. Again, that would seem to be uh, quite obviously true. Um, but let's test it for validity. Well, we've got a false conditional, so necessarily P, not possibly P. And in, in this one we can go a bit further because we can convert not possibly p into necessarily not p but again that's all we can do um, and remember these two here aren't contradictions you'd uh, you'd need to have you only have a contradiction if the if the negation was on the other side of this necessarily you'd only have a contradiction if you had necessarily p and uh, not necessarily p but we uh, we don't have contradictions here, so this this tree is still open, and it's complete. So this argument is invalid. Um, now what this means is that in K, P can be both necessary and false, and P can be both necessary and not possible. Uh, and that's quite odd, but it really just drives home the point that uh, at the end of the day we are just dealing with a formal system here this box doesn't really mean necessarily and the diamond doesn't really mean possibly that's just how we interpret them for certain purposes but you have to keep in mind that if you interpret them that way then there may be systems of uh, of modal logics which give you very counterintuitive results um, now we will look at systems later in the series where where this kind of thing doesn't happen, where they do, uh, where where they follow the meaning of necessity and possibility in in a more reasonable manner. Um, but that's in K.